Pat is good. All the time, yes. Do you remember the day you cried out to the master? <laughs> Asking for help. Help. I mean, there were many days. <laughs> but the day that something happened, hallelujah. You know, we don't forget where we came from, amen? But we don't dwell there. We are grateful from there. Would you turn to Galatians chapter 6, please? In verse 7. Do not be what? Do not be what? Deceived. Deceived. Satan's greatest weapon is deception. His power is fear. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not what? Lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. Again, what you sow is what you reap. Nobody gets away with it. If you sow into the Spirit, you shall reap life. Amen? Amen. One of the things that begins to happen is the enemy who plans his attacks daily, you know. He tries to get us to react instead of respond. And when a person reacts, it means they sow in the flesh. When a person responds, they sow in the spirit. And when an individual reacts, they miss out opportunities. Why? Because they sow in the flesh. You can't catch the things of the Spirit. But those who respond, they maintain position for opportunity. Amen? Now, God gives us a free will. So you and I have the power and the authority to choose. We make choices of a free will because he does not interfere with our will. Amen? No. But sometimes our choices can cause harm and regret. Now, if you sow in the flesh, you usually cause harm and regret. If you sow in the spirit, it causes joy and encouragement. One of the things the enemy tries to do is get us into a place to react, so we make a choice that brings what? Regret. I was doing a teaching one day last week in New York, and, I, and man, I saw this. Like, I was talking about the mind. The mind is like the storehouse of all memory. And it's like a meeting place of voices. And one of the things that I saw was an extension of that mind. I thought, well, what's this, Lord? He said, this is the mind, stronghold mind, a mind that holds regret. And there are so many areas of regret in people's lives that they don't realize they're attached to. People are still holding on to regret. Even when you forgive, you can still hold on to regret. Is everybody okay? Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. What is regret? It's a sorrow for the decision of a wrong decision or a choice that you made. You're regretting that because you are sorrowful for it. Amen. And I don't have to ask anyone if you've ever made a decision you regretted. So one of the things the Lord is trying to do is prevent us 
from making decisions that bring regret. Does everybody get it? Because it puts people in the bondage, big time. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. In other words, be respectful to one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your efforts... Siri, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Let me tell you, I hear about people falling left and right because they are not alert and they're not consistent. They're not consistent in prayer. If you can't be consistent in prayer, you can't be alert. The enemy knows. If he can get you to compromise your prayer time, your warfare, or your worship, he'll look for an access. It says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Listen, when you're not in the spirit, you are not in the faith. The enemy does it, makes it very, very simple for us, to, to be honest with you, with the influence to make a wrong choice or decision or even a wrong agreement with someone, which is a, when you make an agreement with something, it's a choice. Amen. When you're not in the spirit, you are not in the faith. The enemy's temptations is to cause a reaction of the lust of the flesh, eye, or self of pride. Knowing that moment of selfish pleasure will bring regret, which leads to oppression, heaviness, sorrow, and for some people, suicide. And then what happens to all of these people because of this regret? Do I need to repeat that? I have a couple blank spaces here. <laughs> the enemy's temptation is to cause a reaction of the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, or the self of pride. Knowing that the moment of selfish pleasure will bring regret, which leads to oppression, heaviness, sorrow, and suicide. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7. You know, that's why the, the Lord gave us the law, the, the guideline. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That's where an individual cannot deny themselves. Why? Because they still hold on to regret or bitterness in those areas. 2 Corinthians 7. Everyone has regretted buying something they shouldn't have. Amen? Making a choice, being somewhere, where, even eating a certain food. Man, I regretted eating that. You know? Oh, man. Tore me up. <laughs> or watching something, putting something in front of your eyes. You said, man, I shouldn't have put that in front of my eyes or whatever or I shouldn't have heard that music or whatever I should have gone I should have waited mm. anyways second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9 hallelujah now I rejoice not that you were made sorry but that your sorrow led to what repentance for you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Not to be what? Regretted. Mm. Godly sorrow is not to be regretted. Does everybody get that? But sorrow of the world produces what? It produces death. For observe this very thing that you sowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourselves. What indignation. 
what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all these things you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Again, godly sorrow is not to be regretted. You know, but I, where there's an area where, look at everybody makes a mistake. We will make mistakes. But we can't allow that to become such a place of regret and a stronghold in our lives. That we hold bitterness towards. See, every area of regret has an emotional attachment to it. And Psalm 55, verse 1. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Do you know that the wicked hate you? Hello. My heart is severely pained within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in a wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O oh Lord, and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around in all the walls. A court iniquity and trouble also in the midst of it. Destruction is in the midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its streets. Well, oppression is from regret. Deceit is the promoter of deception so that an individual reacts or makes emotional choices and causes missed opportunities. So many times we've missed opportunities and don't realize it, and then later with that opportunity we realize and we regret it. Amen? Oppression is from regret. Deceit is the promoter of deception to react and make emotional choices. Remember, the enemy wants us to miss opportunities from God. In Proverbs 16. You might have regretted some of the friends you hung around with. You might have regretted the person you married. That's why people aren't married anymore, because <laughs> they regretted it. Some people are joyful that they're out of it. <laughs> Thank God I ain't marrying that kind of girl anymore or that kind of guy anymore. But you know, in these areas, Regret can be diminished if it's turned into a lesson. Does everybody get that? It's when it's not turned into a learning lesson that regret grabs hold of you and it becomes oppressive. You know, most uh, people in addiction are under such regret, it's incredible. Every time they use it, they, they look for that moment of pleasure for relief and then regret comes. I can't believe I did this again. That's called regret. Amen. I can't believe I let everybody down. I let my children down, my spouse down, my family down. I, I let God down. But in that arena, we're not thinking about God too much. We're trying to stay away from God. People don't run to the presence of God. They run from the presence of God. In fact, most of them are underneath a couch somewhere. Hallelujah. Verse 17. We're passed out somewhere. What did I say? Psalm 60? Oh, Proverbs 16. I'm sorry. <laughs> Proverbs 16. Verse 17. God tries to warn us from falling into regret. 
By conviction. By what? Conviction. When we can't receive conviction, he usually tries to warn us through someone else. Man, you're going to regret what you're about to do. Did anybody ever tell, you know, the, and then when somebody blows it and they do it, it's like, you know, you, you want to tell them you told them so. <laughs> but you don't, you don't want to make them feel any worse than they already do, you know. I told you so. <laughs> but that's what the spirit of regret says to you. Because he likes to put wood on the fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 17, Proverbs 16, 17. What does it say? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. But pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of the humble spirit with the lonely than to divide the spoil. Pride, lover of flesh, the flesh man. It brings self-destruction caused by regret, suicide, addiction, and people lose hope. Regret will bring, up, bring a person in such a valley of oppression and no hope. Remember, what the devil's focus is to kill you. He's come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So he wants to destroy anything that Jesus has built with you. He wants to steal everything that God has given you. And he wants to kill you. And that's his job. And he does it very well. And he, if he can get you to kill yourself. People are overdosing left and right. They're dying all over. They're killing themselves. And you know what? They're all under the spirit of oppression. Every single one. Every addict is under the spirit of oppression, no matter what. And regret. There's regret that promotes oppression. Does everybody get it? Without regret, there ain't no oppression. But they work together with one another. So people that are addicted are under oppression and regret. And these are spirits that interfere with an individual and promote them to finally take their lives. That's what they're looking for. In fact, they, don't even, they get them to a place where they don't care about their lives. They have no hope. 2 Corinthians 10. How is regret diminished? When it's turned into a lesson, a learning process. But some people refuse to accept it as a learning process. They're still blaming everybody else for their regret. And that just builds more. I'm miserable because of you. No, you're miserable because you choose to be. I'm an addict because of you. No, you're an addict because you choose to be. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the physical, we do not war according to the physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds. Is regret a stronghold? Oh, yes, it has its, has its own box, let me tell you. Casting down arguments... And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Again, regret is a stronghold and a memory. It's a memory lie. Remember that. Because a stronghold is a what? Memory lie. It has with unforgiveness, sometimes to self and to others. And the mind is a storehouse of memory. Regret has its own mind or storehouse that is connected to emotional choices of sorrow. Or what we call regret. Regret has its own mind or storehouse that is connected to emotional choices of sorrow or regret. 
with people, places, purchases, contracts, covenants, and any other choice or decision. How many times you signed a contract of purchase or, or a, a thing saying, oh, yeah, I'll pay you back, and you, you regret you did that. And then you're miserable about the whole thing. I mean, people are still miserable about something they did 20 years ago on that. They bought a lemon, an automobile lemon. <laughs> In fact, the collectors are still after some of them because they... <laughs> They said, yeah, forget that. And they regretted buying it. But the regret left if you learned a lesson. But the debt didn't. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 32. Many people regret having tattooed their bodies. But if it's turned into a learning lesson, what happens? Regret's not there. It can be turned into a testimony. Verse 32, let's speak it together. But recall the former days in which, you, after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you have compassion on me, and in my change, and joyfully accept the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. You know, if you keep your mind heaven-bound, things are different. But if you keep it earthly-bound, you're in trouble. Therefore, do not cast away your what? Your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of what? endurance so that after you have done the will of God you may receive the promise for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry now the just shall live by faith but if anyone draws back my soul has no pleasure in him but we are not of those who draw back to perdition but those who believe to the saving of the soul so we are in need of endurance but there's something else we are in need of revelation Proverbs 29 Verse 18. We are in need of a revelation, a visitation, an impartation, illumination. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off the restraints of the flesh. And happy is he who keeps the law. In other words, there's no prophetic insight. When people lose prophetic insight, the restraints begin to, it's like somebody loosening their pants, their belt, their belt. And their pants fall down, they trip over them. They're low. The belt of truth has been loosed. No prophetic insight, no restraints because of no revelation. So what they do is then they look for false fulfillments in every area. And when they try to get a, a fulfillment that's false, regret comes. When regret comes, oppression comes. Does everybody get it? When oppression comes, the enemy's there to promote something even worse. God has forgotten me. Oh, man, the, every voice from hell comes out now saying all kinds of stuff, trying to beat you down. You need to just take your life. God. He took our life. Amen? Now we live for him. We don't live for us anymore. But again, here we falls into that same spiritual law of God Almighty. Deny yourself. Take up the cross. Follow. Without follow. No, deny yourself. Amen? Fight and follow. If you're not a fighter, there's no way you can follow. When people stop fighting, they cannot follow. They become a casualty. Matthew 13, verse 18. Therefore what? Hear, not listen. 
Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then a wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he what? Stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives, receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Now, this is where you've got to have the patience and the endurance. You need to have the trust. You may need to be able to deny yourself. Amen. So you can reap a full reward. Everything is about this. And, and in this, depending on what you're able to see, so many times people become anxious. Or they're doing things for the wrong reason. And they'll regret that. People are wanting something. And the Anxiousness comes and causes them to make a decision or choice or purchase or whatever it may be instead of waiting. Waiting. And when they do that and they didn't receive a hundredfold, see, because you and I are going to receive 30, 60, or a hundredfold. Well, we want a full reward, not a partial of everything that we do. So if we're willing to wait on what God is leading us to instead of jumping ahead of God, amen, waiting on it. But I need this right now. Does God know you need it right now? Yeah. But so many times people, because it's available or because they're financially okay to get whatever, they get it instead of waiting on God. Does everybody understand that? And then what the one special thing that God has for that person, they missed that opportunity. So now whatever, the, just for an example, I'm going to use an automobile. So they bought an automobile because they can afford it and do whatever. But God was saying, wait. But they didn't wait. So they missed an automobile that would have lasted longer. Does everybody get that? Less maintenance, less having to spend money on it to maintain and so forth. So they purchase it. Same thing with buying a house. Sometimes people are so quick to buy a house. I got a house. When it was the wrong house. Man, they end up, or they marry someone, and they end up for a long time, man, going through whatever. They didn't receive, they didn't get the full reward, but they had to work it out for a long period of time. So things can get totally worked out and settled and repaired or whatever. But you know, the, so many times we spend ourselves repairing or redoing things. Even in our own life. In our own circumstances. Because we've missed the opportunity and not waited. Fallen into regret. Oppression, making wrong decisions, emotional decisions, and instead of learning from them, repeating them. Does everybody get it? God is warning us because the enemy is on the prowl to get people to make wrong choices right now. Look at how many people got, man, they made a wrong choice. Now, many of them have regretted it, and many have come to a place where they repented, so praise God. But some people are too prideful. Uh, God's with me, it ain't going to hurt me. God's with you. See, God may be with you, but you may, may not be with God. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. Oh, I know the Lord. I've been walking with the Lord 30 years. Yeah, well, he, 
have you been walking with him or has he been walking with you? Hello. A lot of people have the imagination that God's with them, but they've grieved the spirit. They don't, the anointing is lifted from them and they're just walking in the flesh and don't even know it. Until disaster comes and they can't overcome because the anointing is the only way you overcome. Acts 10, verse 37. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit, with power, who went out doing good and healing all who were what? Oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. Hallelujah. Healing those oppressed by the devil, by the anointing of God. Again, so many people have no idea that they walked away from the anointing. Matthew 11, start at 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. That means take my anointing upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Take my anointing and learn. Go to Ephesians 4, verse 20. But you have not so what? Learn Christ, or you've not so learned the anointing. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yes, kick out all those strongholds and memory lies and things that are coming against God Almighty and the truth trying to mess with your identity. Some people are 30, 40 years so-called Christians and still don't have the identity. But re be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. They've not learned how to live in the spirit of the anointing. They've grieved the Holy Spirit and rejecting his conviction and counsel, and he has backed from them. John chapter 8, verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Wow. You are, <laughs> in other words, you are not in the spirit, but you are in the flesh. See, your flesh is the offspring of evil. So when an individual is in the flesh, the Lord says, you're not mine. You're under the father, the devil of lies. So even a believer who's so-called be a believer can fall out of the spirit into the flesh and come under the father of lies. Does everybody understand that? And be deceived. Why do people go back out and, and do all kinds of stupid stuff all over again? Because they've walked away from the anointing. 
They walked away from the presence of God. And you know what usually causes that individual to make that choice is regret. Regret, offense. I mean, think about this. How stupid were we all in all those days, all those times, when somebody got offended, they were wanted almost, they, oh, I'm going to go out and use, or go out and drink, or go out and do something stupid. Like it's hurting them. And it really isn't. It's hurting themselves. And then they fall into regret for what they just did. Sometimes people can't recover. I know many people that didn't, didn't recover from it and died. They, they put their lives on a death row and lived a life that was just, they were going to die. They didn't care. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much gold, much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is what? Warned. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins, which means assuming. So many people assume. And when they make uh, assuming decisions, they assume, well, I thought, you know, I made decisions because I thought. Bummer. Too many people are thoughting, thinking, making wrong decisions instead of waiting on the Lord. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Hello. God is warning us of the trap of regret, assumption or presumption. Many walk in it by blind faith. And then with the choices they make, they regret. Refusing to accept counsel, correction, and direction. Ah, I'm all right. Sure you are. I'm going to close the second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. That's us. When we're taken out of the way, all hell is going to break loose. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they do not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Well, we know right now the whole administration and so forth. Well, that's all we're seeing is all of this manifest right now. There is no love of truth at all. I mean, they're just constantly lying about everything. And I think most of the American people have awakened to the total lies about what's going on. And if they think they're going to get any votes, the only way they can get them is to cheat. Verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they may believe the lie and that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and belief in the, in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by our epistle. 
Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay blessed.